What is up people? And today I want to talk about a Docker based workflow for development. When I write code, the first thing I do is create a Docker file. Most developers have quite a complicated setup um, on their local machine, a lot of dependencies they need to install. And this can kind of uh, introduce complexities when you're trying to create a development environment that matches your production environment. And today I'm going to show you guys the pros and cons of a Docker based workflow how it works, and I'm going to show you guys a couple of examples using different programming languages. So let's go. Now to use a Docker based workflow, there are three important things that you need to understand. Three great struggles that most people have for adopting the strategy. Now I have Visual Studio code open and you can see in the terminal here I have I'm in a folder this is my git repo and I'm in a working directory now the first problem is people need to be fairly fluent at navigating Windows Linux Mac file system using the command line so tools like CD and LS those are the basic fundamentals it's very simple you use CD to move into folder paths and LS to show you the list of files and folders so if I say LS you can see I have a components directory and I can use CD to go into the components directory I can then do LS to see what folders are down there and if I do CD CD into the music directory music consumer you can see I can go there and then I have the source so I can go CD into source and I can do LS and I can climb into the folder folder structure like this you can own you can also CD into a number of nested um, depth folders and fo um, directories as well so CD is for changing directories this is very important and also LS is for showing now if I do CD dot dot slash I can go one directory up if I do cd dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot I can go all the way up and then similarly I can go back down now you might be wondering why am I showing you guys these basics and this is because a lot of the time when running a docker based workflow you either have to navigate the file system inside and outside of the container and I see this mistake happening over and over where people get lost they get lost on their file system and they're not able to mount their source code into a container but we'll get to that um, similarly to step one there is the working directory the concept of working directory working folder if we look at the terminal here we can see this is our working directory now command line has the concept of you got echo so you can print out stuff and variables and there's a variable called pwd which is the working directory and if i echo that out it'll print the same thing it prints where i'm at so this is very important because i see this mistake again quite often um, you don't want to hard code paths when you're writing scripts for docker based workflows so we're going to use um, this variable to get the current working directory so that makes our solutions very portable now also notice that i'm running a powershell inside the visual studio terminal and when you open up a terminal so if i open up a new one you can see it defaults to the git repo i'm at if you look on the right hand side here i opened a new powershell window and i default to c users and my user directory um, i've also seen different flavors of powershell different versions or user settings which controls this um, sometimes people open the, the the powershell window and it defaults to c windows system 32 so this is again users need to be conscious of the working directory and if this is your working directory and you need to get to your source code then just use cd and navigate there so that's simple and ls to make sure you're in the right place now the third um, struggle to understand so once you get fluent with the first and second one um, you can navigate to where your source code is Sec uh, the third one is understanding docker volumes and the dash v mount specification take a look at this docker um, command so in this one we have docker run and we're going to run it interactively 
notice the dash v mount specification when we do docker run we pass dash v argument docker will expect the volume specification after the dash v so right after the dash v um, also note that there needs to be a single space between the dash v and the actual you know the actual variables that you pass in on the right hand side and this is just command line basics i see often um, developers would basically leave out the the space like that so they have this um, which command line won't understand so make sure you have the space over there and yeah that often stumps people now the specification looks like this dash v and then space and then host path colon container path it's very important to know that the host path is the path on your machine. It would pretty much in my case be this directory. This is what I want to pass in. So if I wanted to, to fix the host path, I would substitute it for a path like this. This would be the host path and that would mount the current folder into the container. Now to make this better, because I don't want to hard code the path, we can put in a variable that I mentioned earlier, pwd. This will translate the pwd into this working directory. So we'll mount the current folder as the host path. The, the next bit is the little colon. And this is important because this is just a separator. I see often people leave this out. They don't understand that this is a separator between the host and the container path. This is how Docker knows which is which. And so you can't leave it out. So it's as simple as that. The container path is the path inside the container. And I usually keep this simple. I make it slash work because it's a folder we're going to do some work in. You can call it whatever you like. So just to demonstrate that the Docker volume specification. So I do Docker run. I run interactive. I do the dash V for the volume. I also then set um, the working directory that on my host and I want to mount it into slash work. I then slash the, I then, I then put the working directory as slash work. That means that as soon as I enter the container, I'm going to be in slash work folder. So I can immediately start working. And for this, just this demo, I'm going to use an Alpine um, 3.9 image, which is really tiny. It's like four megs. And I'm going to run a shell terminal as an entry point. So when we do this, we are now inside the container at slash work. And if I do LS, we can see all the files that are outside the system. We can now see inside. So have a look at the left. You can see there's a components folder. I can see the components folder inside the container. I can also see the Docker compose, the readme and the to-do file. I can see those. So now I'm inside the container. So this is important for Docker development um, where we do work inside the container. Okay, so to show you guys a bit of a demonstration, I created a Git repo. I'll put the link in the description. It's on GitHub for a Docker workflow example. And in this repo, I'm going to do some examples for four of the major programming languages. I've got C Sharp, I've got Golang, Node.js and Python. Um, so if we do LS in here, we can see we have a folder for each one of our programming languages. And if I go into these um, folders and I look inside I have a docker file for each one of them and if I cat that docker file we can see I just created a base image with um, Alpine 3.9 so I have all these docker files C sharp has a docker file Golang has one Node.js has one and Python has one and inside these docker files we're going to define our dependencies now remember we don't have anything installed on our machine other than docker so this docker file has to describe everything about our container image that we're going to use in our build pipeline so for .NET we need to install this um, .NET Core SDK for Golang we would get the Go SDK for Node.js we'd have to install Node and also NPM all those kind of things that we need for our for our workflow and Python we'd have to install the either Python 2 or 3 and then we'd be good to go so I also created this um, docker compose file you take a look there and the docker compose file is just a kind of a handy file to describe everything and we can go and use docker compose build and docker compose push to build our image and to push it into um, container registry. I'm using Docker Hub because it's free. And we can see here I have a C-sharp definition, 
where I call my image, my container C sharp and I tag my image. This is my Docker Hub account. And I'm just gonna tag this image as C sharp and pop, put a ver uh, version here. And then for Golang, I do the same, Node.js, I do the same, and Python, I do the same. So if I wanna build individually these images, I can just say Docker Compose Build C Sharp or Docker Compose Build Node.js. Video, we're gonna focus mainly on the, the local Docker development workflow. So this is all about installing dependencies inside the container, writing code, building it locally, and being able to run the, the container for different languages. So I'm gonna show you guys the, the, the basic processes of what I follow to do container-based development. Now I'm going to quickly run through all the programming languages and install the dependencies we need. So this is um, .NET Core. Go on to Docker Hub and I want to install the .NET Core. I'm going to need the SDK to do development. So I go over to this Docker file and I say from this and we can then, if we do ls, I can see my Docker Compose file is ready and I can do Docker Compose Build C Sharp. And that'll go ahead and download that SDK and start um, yeah, build this image with nothing in it. Now, Docker Hub makes this really easy because for every programming language, there will be a Docker SDK on Docker Hub. So you can see I got Golang here. There's a similar one for Python and also Node.js. And to keep things really tiny and small to minimize the build, I went for the Alpine flavor. So if you look down here, you can see all the different versions. So there's um, Node 12 and then Alpine. Um, for Python, I went with 3.7 Alpine. And for Golang, I went with 1.12 Alpine. So really tiny images. Um, you can see here in my Docker files, I uh, have C Sharp. That's one's quite big because it's the SDK is big and it's not an Alpine version. Um, I've got Golang Alpine. Here's my Node.js and my Python. So I can build them all by saying Docker Compose build. So it's, it's important to understand Docker Compose. You can either say Docker Compose build and then one of the service names. So I can say C Sharp. Golang, Node.js, or Python, or if I leave that out, it'll just go and build everything. So it's it's also important to know that um, because we're starting from scratch and we're pulling in all these images, the SDK for most programming languages is quite bulky. So there's a lot of download that'll happen up front. And this makes sense because just like normally, like you go onto Python's website and you have to download the SDK, or you have to download the Node SDK and all the NPM stuff that you need. It takes a while to set up, right? So for Docker, that's no different. Um, the only cool thing with Docker is once it's um, built all those layers as we're busy with doing now, you'll find that it caches that those layers. So all we need to do now is put our source code on top. And every time our source code changes, only that part of the container image will rebuild. So we'll never have to download all of these different things again. So the beauty about Docker is we can have multiple Docker files with different versions of each of our programming language SDKs. So we're not flooding our host with different versions and we, you know, overcomplicating um, what we have installed. There's nothing installed on our host. Everything is in the Docker file. So it's nice and clean. So you can see now that it's all built. And if we clear this out and we run it again, watch how quickly it rebuilds. If I do this all again, boom, it's done. All four of the programming languages rebuilt from cache. Okay, so what did we learn in this video? The important thing is the groundwork, the basic fundamentals. So sorry if you guys are experts, but I thought we'd rewind this, take it back to the drawing board, do the very basics, learn the command line, navigating the file system, um, inside and outside of the container, and then also look at Docker volumes, how we mount our code from our machine to the container. This is very important because we're gonna use this methodology to access our um, development environment, which is all gonna be running inside of container. We've also taken a look at building our Docker file. This is basically describing our development environment. And we have the build um, environment inside a container. So we've got a Docker file for each of the programming languages. Now in the next video, what we'll be doing is we'll be taking source codes from the different programming languages and we'll be creating an application for each one of them and actually compile it inside the container. And then we'll, what we'll do is look at more advanced concepts like debugging inside the container, um, like 
executing com uh, code remotely inside the container. Also look at advanced concepts like rebuilding the, 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 the application without having to take down the container. So really looking at uh, developer agility and developer experience. So hope this helped you guys. Um, hit that like button, subscribe and stay tuned for the next one. Peace.